just wanted to come and say thank you for lending me that $500 a few weeks ago. Yeah, fine, whatever, but that's really the only reason you came here today? You scared the living daylights out of me! Come on, really? No, seriously, I, th I thought you were some kind of stranger. Like, I, I think I tooted. Yeah, I noticed. So what are you watching anyway? You mind if I join you? I, I don't know. It's kind of embarrassing. Oh, come on. What is it? Promise you won't tell anyone? Promise. Are you kidding me? I love this! We're, gonna, we're turning this into a weekly tradition. everyone so we just spent the last two weeks celebrating Easter and now we're coming right back to where we left off in our Jesus Loves series with a message called Jesus Loves Strangers and now I don't know about all of you but I looked at the title and I thought to myself no no, no that can't be right because now raise your hands hold them up high who here grew up learning that not to talk to strangers yeah it should should be everyone like I remember the lesson Jeff what do you do if a stranger talks to you? Well you said I should scream real loud and then kick him in the unmen in the unmentioned the and between the legs and then run away. Very good, now go play. And that works just fine until my uncle, who I didn't recognize at the time, comes up to me and says, Hey Jeff, how's it going, sport? How did you know my name? <laughs> and now that's probably how I'd react to that creepy pajama Jeff from the video. Uh, but when I talk about strangers today, I'm talking about outcasts. That the people that society not only looks down on, but who are avoided. Like they're seen as untouchable, having like racial and social prejudices against them. And we're going to see how Jesus, rather than separating himself from them, goes to them and says that we should love them too. I heard this uh, story this week about a group who went on a missions trip to India. And the team, they were pumped about the trip, the ministry that they were going to do. And so they landed in India and they had to hop on this bus and drive for two days to take them to the city that they were going to stay in called Kota. And the bus ride to Kota, they, they learned about just life and culture in India. They passed by cities that were so busy, it seemed like a, another car or person couldn't even fit there. And they experienced new sights, sounds, and smells as they traveled from big cities to small villages to wide open countrysides. And as they drove, the group of students from the U.S., they got to know the three friends who were, like, hosting them. There was Joseph, he was 20, he kind of represented the ministry that they were serving with. And then there was Sai, who was the bus driver, and he didn't speak much uh, English, but he laughed hysterically just at everything that he did. And then Ajayi, who was about the same age as some of those students on the trip, and he was known as the conductor because he was the bus driver in training. And so these guys, they're all hanging out with the team, they're sharing stories and teaching them about their country. And along the way, the group, they stopped for lunch at McDonald's. And yes, there's McDonald's everywhere, even in, in rural India. And so they walk in and the group, they certain, soon learned that McDonald's in India, it's a little bit different from McDonald's in the US. And one of the major differences is that India, they don't serve beef, just because of some like the local customs and stuff. But besides not serving beef, the restaurant itself, it was pretty close to what you might be familiar with. Like the food tasted familiar, it was family friendly, clean, and the staff, they treated American tourists like royalty, like they were very kind. Um, but there was one major difference that the American students noticed immediately. Joseph, he was their guide from the ministry they were working with, he just jumped right off the bus with them to join them for lunch. But Sai and Ajayi, their, their new friends, they, they weren't welcome. Because of the social standing given to them by their jobs and their income level, they were too ashamed to come through the doors uh, because their culture had taught them that they weren't worthy of eating at such a nice restaurant. Yeah, you heard that right. The caste system in India prevented these two men from even walking inside of a McDonald's. Which, I don't know, it just seems crazy, right? Like it's McDonald's. 
And if I asked you like what you would have done if you were a student on that trip, I think we'd all agree that we'd invite them in. Like no matter what restaurant we were at, they should eat with us. It seems silly. But what seems silly to us didn't really seem silly to them. And I'm sure that there are so many things that we do without even realizing it that seem silly to others, but not to us. Because in our world, we've created these social classes and systems, and we have cultural expectations for how we're supposed to act within those boundaries. Like talking to strangers, it might seem dangerous to us in our culture, but that isn't the case all over the world. And today, I just want to take some time to talk about a story where Jesus breaks through some of these cultural barriers, barriers and reaches out to the strangers, the outcasts, or the less than. In John 4, there's this story about the woman at the well. And Jesus, he was traveling back to Galilee, and he needed to pass through Samaria. And at some time around noon, they came to this Samaritan village and sat by the well. And then this woman comes up to get water, and Jesus, he asks her, like, hey, could I get a drink of water? And she could not believe it. Because at this time, Jews and Samaritans, they didn't only like not talk to each other like bitter relatives at Thanksgiving. Like, no, this, this was way more than that. Jews and Samaritans, they wouldn't be caught dead talking to each other. But Jesus, he doesn't care about that. And so they start talking about water. And Jesus says, I am the living water. And she's like, excuse me? Like, who the heck are you, Mr. Living Water? You think you're better than Jacob? And Jesus says, like, listen, everyone who drinks this well water is going to get thirsty again. But anyone who drinks the water I give will never thirst again. It's always flowing. And she's like, okay, okay, I'm interested. Like, tell me more. How do I get this? And Jesus, he says, go get your husband and let's talk. But she said she didn't have a husband. But the reality was, and what Jesus already knew, is that she had had five different husbands and is living with guy number six right now. And this woman, she was kind of embarrassed that Jesus knew that. And so she got a little bit defensive. But Jesus, he still, he invited her in. He says, it doesn't matter like, who you are or where you're from. God wants relationship with you. It's not about what culture or family you're born into. It's, it's more than that. Like, it takes surrendering your life to the God who gave it to you. And she's not so sure. In verse 25, she says, I don't know about that. All I know is that the Messiah is coming. And when he arrives, then we'll get the whole story, Waterman. And Jesus, he looks at her and he says, oh, yeah, yeah hey, look. Yep, that's me. Like, you don't have to wait any longer or look any further. And right then she realized who she was talking to and she ran back to her village in a panic, like even leaving her water jug behind to go tell everyone what she had just seen. Like, now this is a crazy story. Jesus was talking to a promiscuous Samaritan woman. And just to say it again, like you weren't supposed to do that. But Jesus says, I don't care who you are, what you've done, what you look like. I love you and you have value. I care about you because you're worth being cared for. Jesus, he broke down those cultural barriers. And now let me quick explain something about wells. Like back in Jesus's day, they didn't have indoor plumbing. And so people, usually women, they'd have to go to the town well, lower a bucket and a rope and fill up these large jugs and then carry the heavy jugs back to their homes. And they had to do this every day. It was like a daily chore, like doing the dishes. But now imagine this, if everyone in the town went to the same place every day at the same time, you'd probably start to see like groups forming and hanging out, wouldn't you? And it's, that's why back then the well was known for more than just a place you got water. It was also where women got together. They hung out. They maybe even gossiped a little with their group. And most of the time they would travel to the well to get water in the morning or at night, like when the air was cool. But did you notice what time of day this woman was getting her water? At noon hottest time of the day sun at the top and the reason that the samaritan woman was probably at the well in the middle of the day was because she was an outcast she was trying to avoid or maybe even being forced to avoid the rest of the women like this woman was used to going to the well alone and avoiding everyone who might otherwise judge her but this time things were a little different because this time she met jesus and and when you meet jesus your life gets changed and as they talked the woman realized that jesus knew all about her he called out all of the things in her life that she had been trying to hide or avoid. But Jesus, he did this gently and lovingly. He didn't shame her, make her feel bad about how like, she's been living her life. Yes, Jesus spoke truth to her, but he led with love. In fact, Jesus took huge risks and crossed tons of boundaries to show his love to her. Like Jesus, he crossed cultural boundaries. Like by reaching out to a Samaritan, he demonstrated that he loves all people regardless of their culture or ethnicity. Jesus, he also crossed social boundaries by speaking to a woman in a culture that didn't often permit men and women to speak together in public. Jesus demonstrated that he loves all people regardless of their social standing. Like while other Jews were ignoring or avoiding and overlooking people like this Samaritan woman, Jesus chose a different path. She could have been considered foreign or strange or less than, but he treated her like she mattered because she did matter. 
That he welcomed her, even though she wasn't like him. Jesus welcomed strangers. Like with Jesus, people who were accustomed to feeling like they didn't belong were suddenly treated like they mattered. Because again, she did matter. Because when, when you're created in the image of God, you have inherent value. And thankfully, that's something that we all share together. It doesn't matter what you do, where you're from, what you look like, where you've been, what you've done. You have value. Jesus sees your value. I see your value. Like for all of the moments that you want to walk to the well at noon and avoid the world, hide your insecurities, believe that nobody cares about what you're going through. Like I, I, We live in this weird dichotomy of seeing our problems as too big for me to handle, but too small for other people to care about. And that's just not true. But Jesus loves you, and he loves the people around you who feel like strangers, who feel like outcasts, who feel like they have to hide or protect an image or protect themselves. In Galatians 3.28, it says, There is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor is there male and female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. Like the levels that we've created to compare ourselves are just that. They're created by us. Jesus, he doesn't see those. He doesn't play by those silly standards. Jesus loves the stranger. And Jesus, he loves you. Fine, what a, that's that's really the only <clears throat> video that we just watched. But when I talk about strangers today, I'm talking about outcasts like the people that society not only looks down on but who are avoided. I really need to do this for real though. <laughs> I felt like that was real and it was gonna be really good. <laughs>